Welcome. This podcast is for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. Do not attempt to reenact anything you hear from this podcast. You're listening to Monty's Mysteries. We bring you true stories and experiences told by myself, Monty, and my guest host. From everything paranormal to legends and strange historical events, we share all things creepy. Turn out the lights, light a candle, and be transcended into the mysteries of Monty. Welcome back, my spooky babies. This episode is about the infamous serial killer, Marie Delphine Lalaurie. If I say that wrong, I'm sorry. Just a little bit of backstory on her. She was married three times. Her first marriage, I believe she was 13. And then her last marriage, where she got the name Lalaurie, which she is mostly known for, he was a doctor and he was much younger than she was. She was born on March 19th, 1787 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Her parents were very wealthy, so she had grown up with being wealthy. A lot of people thought that she was always marrying guys with a lot of money because she was a gold digger, but she had a lot of money from her parents. So that was not the case. And she had four children with her first husband, I believe. And then she ended up living with two children in the infamous house on on Royal Street in New Orleans. Um, So some things kind of led up to people being suspicious of Marie. I'll just call her Marie because it's a long name. There had been rumors around the town that Marie had been abusing and maybe experimenting on her slaves and so a lawyer went up and investigated these rumors about the abuse but he did not find any evidence and then later a 12 year old girl named leah she was a slave for marie she was brushing marie's hair and hit a snag and broke the brush And Marie got so upset that she got her whip and chased her up to the roof. And we don't know if the girl fell off or if she jumped off because she was so scared of being punished. Or if she just missed a step. But she did fall off the roof and die. Later, that body of the 12-year-old girl was found in the walls of the home. Marie was forced to give up nine slaves later to pay for possible misconduct and abuse towards them just because the rumors weren't stopping. They were still suspecting that she was causing harm to her slaves and I don't know like all the rules about the slaves, although like slavery was horrible and at least they had rights that were some kind of thing that said that they couldn't be abused like that, which was good, I guess. So Marie was forced to give up nine of her slaves to pay for that as like a, um, like a punishment. But those slaves were auctioned off and one of Marie's family members bought them and gave them right back to Marie. And so they were put right back into the condition that they were in. So it was kind of pointless, which is really unfortunate for those slaves. Um, she chained the cook to the stove, and Marie's daughter, when she saw what her mother was doing, she thought it was wrong when she saw that the cook had been chained to the stove, so Marie's daughter tried to free that slave and some of the other ones but Marie beat her horribly, so that's really unfortunate. Everything kind of came together on April 10th, 1834, and that's when the Lollery Mansion on Royal Street in New Orleans, Louisiana, went up in flames. 
The rescuers arrived, and they found the 70-year-old cook still chained in the kitchen. While the madam of the house was trying to save her couches from the flames. So obviously she cared more about her couches than the human beings. The cook claimed that she started the fire in an attempt to kill herself rather than continuing working and being punished and abused by Marie. She said that slaves would be taken to the top level of the house and would never be seen again. And she didn't want that to happen to her. Bystanders who saw the fire, they tried to help get the slaves out of the fire, but Marie refused to give them the keys to the slave quarters, obviously because she knew that she was hiding something horrible. The bystanders ended up breaking down the door because they were refused to be given the keys, and what they found would haunt them for the rest of their lives, I'm sure. About seven slaves were in the slave quarter, horribly mutilated. Some were hung from the ceiling by their necks, and they had chained, they had spiked collars that made it so that they couldn't move their neck. And some had their limbs torn off. One had their stomach sliced open with their organs wrapped around their waist. Another woman had her mouth cut open with feces stuffed inside and then sewn shut. A man had his skull drilled into with a wooden spoon protruding out of that area. And there are rumors that say that's to scramble his brains around. There are rumors that some men had their nails ripped off and eyes gouged out, but we're not sure if that actually happened. All of them were naked, and if they weren't strapped to a table, they were chained to the wall. When the public found out what was happening at the mansion, they went to the property and completely tore it apart. They ripped it apart, and they ripped it apart to the point where it was almost left to just the walls standing. The slaves, when I first read this story in high school, I was really hoping to hear that they, you know, were let go or they were freed or something like that. But unfortunately, they were just put up for auction again and thousands of people came and they, they were resold after they were kept in police custody after the incident. As for Marie and her husband, um, her husband didn't care. He was just like, mind your own business, and didn't care what she was doing. They escaped the mob of people that would have gotten to them, and they moved to Paris without any justice being given. And we there's not a lot of records or anything that says how their life went in Paris. There are some rumors, though, that she came back to New Orleans in disguise later. Um, but again, that's just rumors. Um, there are also rumors that said that she was mauled by a wild boar in Paris while out on the hunting party. It does say that she died December 7th, 1849 in Paris, France. And then later, the man who rebuilt the mansion after the fire, he found human remains like skulls, skeletons in the frames and underneath the floorboards of the home. And so what people think is that she would hide the bodies in the home so that people wouldn't know that she was killing off her slaves and torturing them. And so they would just basically just disappear without a trace. But they were in the home. This is a really unfortunate story. Um, there are some people that think maybe she's crazy. Maybe she was possessed. Maybe it was just she was incredibly racist. Let me know what you guys think. Unfortunately, racism is still a thing today. And it is... Black History Month, so go my people of color. I am I am all for everybody 
Here's my little spiel on equality, but we all are human beings. We're all here to live our lives. You know, we're all just here. We all have to deal with shit. Don't judge someone because of the color of their skin or because of where they're from. That's ridiculous. Just because someone's different than us, that doesn't mean that we should treat them any different or hate them or not like them or be rude to them. We need to open up our arms and be compassionate to everybody. Doesn't matter if we even speak the same language. I would be happy to speak to somebody who I have no idea even what language they're speaking and just see if I can get to know who they are and just vibe with them. I don't care where they're from, what they've done. I mean, as long as they haven't murdered anybody. But I am shocked at how much racism is still in effect today. It's horrible. As some of you guys know, I'm getting married this year. And my fiancé is Polynesian. And since being with him, I am a white woman. And I have noticed how much I didn't see was happening with racism every single day. When we go to the store, he gets people treating him differently and looking at him differently. Even, like, cops, they treat him differently. No shade to cops. Cops, you know, are just like everybody else. Can't judge them all for one person, but... It just makes my heart so sad that this is still happening. When 200 years ago, this was a thing. You would think that we can move on past this. And I'm sorry for going on for so long about this, but this is something that I am so passionate about. And I just really care about everyone being ex accepted, no matter who you love, no matter where you're from, no matter what you look like. You could have green skin and be in love with someone who identifies as a toaster. I don't care. Like... Just love everybody. Be kind to everybody. You don't know what they're going through. You have no idea. Just treat everyone with kindness. No matter what. Even if they're rude to you. Just maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe their wife just died. Or something horrible had just happened to them. You never know. So that's my little spiel today. Sorry for going on for so long about it. I love you guys, and I'm sorry I haven't been so consistent lately. I've been going through a lot, but I will get back on it. Every single week, we will have an episode now. I truly do love and care for you guys, and I, I think about each and every one of you. And you guys are my favorite people ever. Stay spooky. I love you. To have one of your personal experiences featured in an episode, contact us via email at montysmysteries.podcast at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and Twitter as Monty's Mysteries, where we will keep you updated on upcoming episodes. Thank you so much for all of your support. Stay spooky.